generally one of us will have the germination of an idea, whether it's an old song I've written, something Rob's written, something Johnny's written, we'll bring it to the fore, bring it to everyone, and everyone will add their little pastiche to it, and, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of, you know, judge from there, how does it sound? With a Vengeance is the title track, and obviously there's a lot of meaning uh, lyrically, which I'll, I'll leave to Rob to talk about because he wrote the lyrics for it, but it's, it's very much similar to um, Cross the Bear in that it encapsulates so many genres. Um, it took us quite a while to put it together. Uh, it was not seamless, it really was quite laborious, and uh, one day we just had this epiphany and, you know, the light bulb went on and we were able to put it together. But it the actual song with a vengeance that actually took probably about six months to write. Um, just ideas changing. Um, some outside ideas got involved. We tried it, it didn't work. We tried, you know, applying something, some other kind of technique to it, it didn't work. Uh, put it down for a little while, walked away, came back to it, tried a couple things, it didn't work. And then finally, just one day, we're like, all right, you know what, let's just put our heads together. How does this rock? And we managed to. We locked it in in a matter of two hours. Yeah, sometimes you go looking for something for a certain thing and you wind up with very finding out something completely different. Very unintentional. Yeah, you wind up going results. down a road you never thought you intended to go down. And this is where you've just found your nugget. Originally the song was about bullying and uh Essentially, it is about bullying. Um, basically, somebody who is constantly schoolyard kid, maybe 10, 11 years old, is bullied by you know the 13, 14 year old, eighth and ninth graders, and uh, you know one day he just has had enough, and he goes back and he gets them one by one, and after being beat down, you know so bad, you know so many times, uh, you're very humiliated. And I've been there before. And, it changes uh, you. And it changes you. It changes you, you for and the rest of your you life when that happens. It makes you very aggressive, and you have that thought in your mind. Yep. And that same person beats you down. It's like, you know what? My fists can taste your teeth. God help you when I find you alone. It's coming. It's, and it's and coming. also, it's a good metaphor, too, because, uh, you know, this can, this can exist metaphysically uh, or metaphorically, really. I mean, bullying, what, what, you know, that, could, that doesn't have to be a, a kid in a schoolyard. Uh, in the... In, in the beginning of the song, uh, there's a there's a thrash part, and there's a real fast double bass with a big snare going on. And I was I just had visions in my head um, of this person coming back for this person, and bam, 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 just smashing this guy's face so in. Brian hit that snare just harder. I, I said, hear it. Brian, I gotta hear that snare. But it does anything similar to us. So, I think, uh... Listen to a little bit of everything you take into account. This is That's stuff that we do, and we're not apologetic about doing it. It's what we are. We're trying to make the best record possible and not be pigeonholed into a specific genre saying, well, we can't do that. That's You will never hear those words with us. You know, We can't play a reggae song. We can't play a classical minuet. We'll do whatever we think works. song was Freak Show, which was, you had written, Rob wrote that about uh, John Wayne Gacy. Right. 
my sensei, uh, Alex Wilkie, he's really big into killer clowns, a lot of clown masks. He's got this room in his house where he's got all these crazy clown masks. He had this picture with him. It was from Vegas. Uh, it said freak show on it, and it was actually an actual freak show out in Vegas where they have these like these midgets and these crazy looking people that are like deformed, that are like have, uh, their own circus act. And uh, somehow that just correlated between the two, and that's how we got Freak Show. and I'm very, very influenced by that stuff. Um, but it also has our three-part harmony, actually four when you add Brian in on the vocals. Yep. Uh, it's got meaningful lyrics, it's got tons of time changes, it's probably our most progressive song and makes the most use of our vocal harmonies and the, the Middle Eastern uh, influence that we have musically. There is an edge of thrash in it as well too with the deny resist part, which is basically goes back to what Steve said at the beginning of his segment there um, as far as people telling you who you should worship and who you should follow and who you should you know uh, pay homage to so to speak When we first uh, started working on Violence and Season, it was um, very thrashy. And when we added the uh, when I added the keyboards and again a kind of Middle Eastern gothy spooky thing, I think it changed the song. Yeah. Rob added a lot of very very cool melodic nuance to his voice. And again, there is a whole Middle Eastern solo I'm playing on on bass. That's another song that I think encapsulates a lot of what is good about the band and uh, the eclecticness of the band. Basically, after 9/11, uh, is, is the basis of the song. Um, uh, as far as terrorism is concerned, um, Taliban, jihadist groups around the, you know, in the in the Middle East, um, how we've been attacked, and how they think that you know they can just sit back and laugh, but we're coming back. For you. Ah! 